Yo, what's up, guys? My name is Glocko. Woo! Oh, God, I missed saying that. We are back for more the letter. Finally, after two or three weeks of hiatus, as of all the crazy stuff I've been doing, I am back again. Okay, this is probably one of the games that I just don't want to quit. Okay, this is something I want to see, you know, see for myself what's gonna happen next until the end. And I am so happy. If you're watching this, I'm so happy you guys are still here watching this, okay? Because I ended the last part, part 14, in a cliffhanger. On a cliffhanger. Which is this part, where Marianne pretty much is seeing the, uh, a really fucked up um, a vision. So, she was, I think, uh, if I remember correctly, last time we were, uh, hanging out with, um, uh, what do you call this? Oh my god, I kind of forgot their names already. <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, we're now here. Okay, let's see, Marianne, what's gonna happen next to you? Okay, uh, I don't feel any less sick because of the sight that greets me. Blood dripped from the walls and the ceiling, pooling downwards and seeping into the third curtains and the carpet. A wave of nausea stronger than the last it hits me along with the overpowering stench of blood and gore. I want to bolt. The rational part of my head is telling me to flee. And I would have gladly done as it asked if only I didn't hear her. In here, Marian. Come on. I have something to show you. Her friend. Her childhood friend. I could have ignored it. Would have ignored it. If I only heard it in my head. But I swear that this time it's coming from one of the rooms. Much further in. Into the study. Oh god, Marian, don't go in there. And I feel compelled to pay attention. And I can't just turn around and leave. Not when it's her. I don't even think as I follow the sound of her voice. Oh god, this is bad. This is bad, Marianne. This is so bad. Oh! Oh, look at that! It's a flashback! Ah, Lorraine. Lovely Amanda Lorraine Lasaya Fiona. She was my friend. The only one that I had at St. Samantha's. Samson's. I was a scholar, the charity case, in a school of privileged and prestigious young girls. They all looked down at me if they cared to look at me or acknowledge my presence at all. All except her. Oh, stop your crying. You know better than to listen to Maeve. Why I gotta teach that butterface a lesson? Wow, look at them, look at them, them go. All with an Irish accent. <laughs> Wait, no, lass! I don't want you getting into trouble with the sisters again! Relax. It's not like I'm going to stomp her and her lackey's arse is flat like last time. Come on, let's just go back to our dorm room. I don't want to be on my tobler while you go get yourself punished. You'll be fine. Gip's there with you. Lorraine was there when I needed her. Through my highs and lows. Having her as a friend made being a strange in a strange school away from my father all the more tolerable. She saw this poor, helpless girl who was kept down and shunned by everyone else, and being the kind soul that she was, she rescued me. So brave, so beautiful, she was something else. I'll eat all the chocolate stashed away in your closet if you go. I can get Mar. Just don't go complaining to me if you get a tummy ache because of that. Well, you don't want to get detention on a weekend, do you? It's a Friday. We can go to town and have some karaoke. And we can have a go at druids and demons again. They're, they're, ca they're castle and dra dungeons and dragons. <laughs> You're not going to miss that just because of Maeve, are you? Sometimes I question what I did to deserve a friend like her. In the darkest corners of my mind, where traitorous thoughts lurk, I thought that she only felt sorry for me. Maybe she was just being a good Samaritan, offering a helping hand. And perhaps I had been too selfish to return the favor. You have a point. I'll just kick her arse on Monday then. That's not what I mean! I know what you mean, Em. Wait, where are you going? You just told me you wouldn't cause trouble. I still have something to do. 
Don't worry, it's not like I'm going to burn down her dorm room or something criminal like that. I'm just going to talk to her. <laughs> you know what they say about jokes being half meant. <laughs> Maybe I'll make it so that her room smells like a dog's air biscuit. That'll make it an excellent weekend. I'll see you in a bit, Marianne. Lots of tubblers. What are tubblers? Because when she told me that she loved me, I couldn't admit that I felt the same way. Not to her and not even to myself. It was wrong. I was taught that way. Husband and wife, one man and woman, you know. Unclean, impure. I prayed for her and I, for our sins and for our salvation. I wanted to apologize for disregarding her feelings so callously. It must have been like a slap to the face for her. But life had gotten in the way. Exams, which were trivial in hindsight now, took top priority. I had to keep my grades up to keep my scholarship for my father. I told myself I would apologize to her when those were over, that I needed to focus first and not let anything distract me. It had been easy when she avoided me like the plague. She was upset. I get that. And now we're back. Back to reality. Ah, look at this place. Ugh. Ah, really reminds me of Corpse Party. I thought I had the time to make things right, but... At seven in the morning, students found a fifth year dead. Mm-hmm. Assumed to have fallen from her dormitory window. Mm-hmm. They told us that, in uh, that, you know, it was an accident. That was the official statement. But I knew better. She was dead because of me. Mave had a hook and I kicked the bucket, didn't she? What? Ding dong, the witch is dead! Huh? She had, though she didn't say which, Lorraine. But at least Maeve had the courage to admit how she felt about me. I don't even know how long I've been stuck here in a trance. Oh wait, what? So what you mean is, she went to the dormitory of Maeve, and then she tried to do something to her, and then stuff got out of hand, and she actually, she, you know, Maeve probably killed her, I don't know. So it wasn't a suicide? In the mirror, Lorraine smiles at me. She's as beautiful as I remember her. But then... <laughs> oh, fuck me! I feel bile rise up in my throat as her clean image warps into how she looked like when they had found her dead, lying on the cold, hard ground. Good Saint Dymphna, great one to work in every affliction of my mind and body. Help me. I'm seeing things, hearing things. Am I going completely insane? Looking everywhere but at her, I hope and pray that it's enough to will whatever this is to go away. It doesn't even immediately register in my head that I can just leave. You, on the other hand, can't even look me in the eye. This isn't Rhea. You're not... You're dead! I'm dead. Because of you. And you won't even look at me. Look at me. My breathing quickens and I can feel my heart being torn apart by her words. I'm so sorry, Lorraine. <laughs> I... Look at me! I can't take it because she's right. It was my fault. The least I can do is look at what I've done. Lorraine, broken and bleeding, looks at me with such hate-filled eyes. An unnatural smile stretches across her face and I can only see malice in it. Oh, shit. <laughs> Then she lunges as the mirror ripples around her form, the glass parting like the water surface for her. She grips my shoulder and I can feel her nails dig deep, sharp even though the fabric of my, you know, through the fabric of my clothes. There you are. Oh god! Ah! Tap, 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 tap. Ah, god, no! No! Oh shit! I, I thought I didn't know what to do. <laughs> it's freaking quick time events. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it again. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's do this, Lorraine. Mm. Oh, no, 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 Fear grips and threatens to choke me. I endure. I escape. And without turning back, I stumble back out. In my panic, I don't even care to look where I'm going. 
With one hand on the wall to steady me, I just hobble as fast as I can away from the study. Away from the mirror. Freedom is bittersweet. I'm free from the madness, it seems, as running out into the hallway reveals it to be in pristine condition. But it means I've turned my back on the rain. Again. I have no plans of stopping. Not until I know I'm safe. And if that means walking back to Luxborn, as ridiculous as the idea is, then so be it. Someone suddenly grabs hold of me, however. Fingers deep, digging deep into my shoulder and my heart nearly stops. My body seizes and I nearly scream. M Marianne! You look awful! I, I mean, not awful, but... <laughs> oh, God! Did Why... something happen? What? Are you right? Why can't I remember her name? God, I just stopped playing for like a few weeks and now I can't even remember her name. I can I remember Luke, though, but... Oh my god. This is right. I, I. Aww. Without thinking, I thought comfort, seeing that it wasn't her. It's a sudden, impulsive thing to do, and, uh, you know, had I been in a better condition, I wouldn't even dare of doing such a thing. But I didn't know what else to do. Though I know I shouldn't, you know, her warmth, her stance, they, they grounded me. Oh, I poor Marianne. She is intoxicating. Marianne, what's going on? Oh, you're shaking like a leaf. Oh, I, I really miss her voice. Why can't I remember your voice? Oh, God. Let's let's see. I'm just going to check her. Hannah! Oh, my God. Why couldn't I remember my real good old waifu, Hannah? Ah, oh, damn it. Tremors run through my body as soon as my mind realized I am no longer in danger. I wanted to cry, scream about what I have seen, but like a scared child, I couldn't control myself. My mind couldn't reconcile with what I had seen. I should just write it off as a figment of my imagination, yet I can still feel her nails cutting into my skin. Are you sick? Should I call for a doctor? Uh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Wright. Just feeling a little woozy and lightheaded is all. Let's get you somewhere to sit down then. Come on, don't worry, I have you. A lie. But a whole lot less complicated than telling her I was attacked by a dead girl. When the feeling of fear eases off, I feel nothing but shame for my actions. <clears throat> I quickly back away as I clear my throat and nod my thanks. I think I've had enough looking around. If it's alright with you and Mr. Wright, I'll meet you outside. If you're mm -hmm. sure, I'll have the car started. Do you need assistance heading downstairs? I'm alright, ma'am. Just go on ahead and I'll be right there. It seems to placate her worries, though only for a brief second. Before she heads down, I don't miss this concerned glance she shoots my way, hidden quickly under another smile. I won't begrudge her for it, you know, that worry. The look on my face must have been a strange enough sight on its own. Even I am still reeling from, from, you know, whatever that was. Her voice still whispers in my ears. After all these years, she's still... No, Marianne. Shaking my head off the thoughts, I drag in a breath, then follow shortly after Mrs. Wright. Whatever has happened in the past is, you know, it's long gone. Only memories now. And those are things I can no longer bring back. It's already dark as we make our way out of the mansion. With no lights, we are only illuminated by the headlamps of the Wright's car and the stars up above us. The sight of them helps me compose myself much more than several minutes of being alone did. The car's engine is running, yet the two still stand out on the lawn. Mrs. Wright is busy, eyes up to the stars. And Mr. Wright, arms crossed, has his eyes down on the ground. It is the crunch of the grass under my heels that brings her attention to me. How about time? What took you so long? <laughs> A minute longer and I'd think the house swallowed you all up. <laughs> well, something like that. <laughs> oh, hush, dear. I'm sure she has her reasons. Marianne doesn't seem the sort to idle. Sorry, I was just checking on something important. See, business is business and they take time, love. You should know that better than anyone. So, Marianne, what do you think? Are you the woman for the job? I know we already signed papers hiring you, but I want to be 100% sure that you are committed. I glance back towards the mansion. Knowing what I had seen there, or rather who I thought I saw there, because there is just no way. 
Not to mention how I acted towards Mrs. Wright, for goodness sake. I should feel the slightest bit hesitant. I was lucky. I've seen enough films to know what happens when a promiscuous woman enters a haunted house. This is my chance to turn it down, make excuses, say that I am not up to the task, that I need to take care of my old sick father. Just pay the fine, which is probably outrageous for a contract like this, and let it go. I should turn it down. But for some obstinate reason, I can't. In the same manner, I haven't let go of her, of the regret that has shadowed me since that day. Much as I hate to admit it, even to myself, seeing her again, the mischievous glint in her eyes, the loose tendrils of her hair curled around her forehead. It's something I've terribly missed, and now that it's here, almost within arm's reach, I... Ah, my father will tell me, Sometimes you just simply have to go through with it. Consequences be damned. And well, I really don't have any logical reason to say no. At least, not something a client like the Wrights would want to hear from a professional designer. It's certainly an interesting project. You can be sure I'm seeing it through the end. Ah, oh, damn, Marian, you're so brave. Such dedication! Oh, I do love the determination. You were always determined like that, weren't you? Determination! Thanks, Lorraine. Jesus Christ, get out of my head! Hearing her voice once again sends a chill running down my back. I can't wait for this day to be over. And there you go! From the mansion and through Anslay, my road with them in silence. But as soon as we hit the city proper, I asked to be dropped off and bid them good night. I thought I'd, it'd be best if I didn't stay too long in confined spaces with either Mrs. or Mr. Right? Both seemed to cause me serious trouble, and if the project had been any less interesting or grand, I would have dropped it without a second thought. Would have. Shouldn't have! Won't. I assure them that my place isn't that far off and I have to fight off the urge to roll my eyes and groan when whiskey throws me a little smirk. Jesus Christ. And we're back here. But even in my own home, peace is elusive, as is sleep. I lie awake thinking of what I saw in that mansion. Of who I saw. If I so much as hear a single whisper from her, if I so much as see a wisp of her hair, I'm afraid I'll go mad. But none of that happens, and it makes me feel hollow. Mm. For two nights, I've had trouble sleeping. But it's only one morning when fatigue had already let me rest that I'm reminded of what terrifies me so. Eh? Eh? In my restless dreams, I see that mirror. The one in the study, and in it, I see her. I see them. Lorraine and Hat. Oh wow, they actually look the same with the same boobies. Oh god, damn. Hannah and Lorraine. Poor pathetic oh, what the fuck? Marianne. Work, work, work. Work, work. She'll That's work me. herself to death. See? Say she doesn't listen. That's all she did. Look at what happened to me. Mm. They talk among themselves with cruel smiles and venomous tongues. Or rather, to themselves. Two head and one but Oh, yeah, that's right. Two boobies. One body. Two heads. Wow, okay, cool. A horrible mockery of these women as if they were the one and the same. More's the pity. Life goes on and goes out and she doesn't even see it. Do you think she'll even realize when she's kicked the book at herself? When they say a person has a hard time telling when they're in a dream, it was true often enough. Even with this bizarre sight, even with the obvious implication that this isn't real, I can't help but feel distress. Yeah, that happens to me a lot during my dreams. Likely. Is that any way to live at all? She might as well be dead. Cruel fate that she's alive and I'm... well... Though they speak into each other's ear, tones low and hushed, I can still hear them as clear as day. Their whispers pervade the air, heavy and oppressive. They bury and dig into my head like tiny maggots, worming their way into my skull. It is only then that they take notice of my presence. Eyes turn towards me and I can feel only a small, you know, I can only feel small under their scrutiny. 
caricature smiles etch on their faces, mimicking each other grotesquely. Oh, Marianne! How long have you been standing there, dearie? Almost for like two minutes, I guess. Come join us, Marianne! <laughs> We won't bite. Oh, I don't mind if I do. Unless you ask, that is. Yeah, well. Have I... you been looking at us? Spying? Mm. How scandalous. Such a naughty girl. I'm sure you were just waiting for something lewd oh. to happen. How did you know? <laughs> you know she will not admit it. She thinks it wrong. You've said it so yourself. Yes. She thought me wrong, impure, abnormal. Because I loved her. My breath hitches and I open my mouth to protest, but they stop me, screeching. The mirror that holds them cracks, lines spider spidering across its surface. Do not lie. We know that the gluttonous thoughts you try to deny, girl. All those desires you bury beneath that sickening guilt. You act the martyr when you turn the bed you lie in into your own hedonistic hell! You are nothing but a tainted soul with filth-stained flesh held together by falsehood and pride! They look... livid. And when it looks like they would lunge... <gasps> I wake, feeling like the wind had been knocked out of me. With a groan, I squint and find a certain fluff ball sitting on my chest, looking as pleased as Punch. Ah, there you go! She is the overlady of the cats, queen of despair and destruction of nice furniture. Though I can't stay mad at her majesty because it feels like she did something good this time. I was having a nightmare, but I can't even remember what it was about. Hey, before that, guys... Awesome voice acting again by these voice actors. God, I was... I felt chills, guys. <laughs> you can just see my 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 hair is standing upright. Oh God, oh some legit legit stuff. <laughs> Impressive. Good job, voice actors. All right, trying to recall leaves a terrible pit in my stomach. Maybe it's probably better that I don't remember. Good morning, Barothio. Who's a good kitty? Who's a good little pussy cat? Eh? Are you hungry? Is that why you woke me up? And content poor purr comes from my sweet dear before she jumps off the bed and trots towards the kitchen. On the other hand, it takes me a bit more before I roll out of my bed and start my day. Mornings before work is always quite a fair. Shower first, then a mug of coffee and a bowl of oats. Sometimes I do stretches and I always check my work email. Hey, that's probably what I do. Uh, yeah, that's pro pretty much what I do <laughs> whenever I wake up. Turn on the computer and then check for emails and then sleep again. I know a lot of you guys do that as well, especially during non-working days. The Wrights will be moving into the mansion today, and I don't think the paperwork is officially done yet. But it isn't too far-fetched to think that they were allowed to start their move, despite that. Rich people like them will always find ways to get what they want after all. I'll be leaving you again today, Beth. So you behave and make sure not to shred up my new covers, okay? Mm -hmm. That's why I don't have cats in my house. And don't worry, <laughs> I didn't forget tomorrow is Black Cat Day, so I'll throw you a party. What, there's a Black Cat Day on October 27th? What? Yeah, that's cool. But only if you behave like a proper lady. She barely gives me a glance as I say that before going back to her own food. Cat. Yeah, I know, right? Dog person here. Hehe. <laughs> Still better than humans most of the time. <laughs> Too bad I have to work with humans. Alright, here we are again in the mansion, guys. The place is already busy as soon as I get here. The four men, one that I've recommended to the rights for his work ethic, is early as usual. Already, he's instructing men here and there with the bigger loads. I have no chance to talk to him as Mrs. Wright appears and greets me with a smile. Mrs. Wright. I hope everything has been to your liking thus far. Good morning, Marianne. It has been delightful and these men have been very helpful. Look at all this. It's so busy <laughs> here. I'm getting tired just looking at them go. I just love hearing Hannah. I don't know. There's something about her uh, uptight voice. It's so cute and I don't know. <laughs> no complications so far with the movers or the previous owners of the mansion, I hope? If anything, the only one being problematic is Luke, if I'm to be honest. He can be such a diva, but I do like that about him. 
She stops looking up at the upper landing where Mr. Wright comes through with two other movers and the mirror from the study. Oh, do be careful with that mirror! We wouldn't want anyone getting hurt because of broken glass! Why are you even having it carried around? Oh? Yeah. Mm, you did say you didn't want the mirror, and I mm, keep getting distracted by it. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Luke. <laughs> if I'm going to turn the study into my office, I'd rather not have it there. Where can we put this? Well, you are not putting it in our room. Why don't you go, I don't know, put it in the wine cellar for now? We can figure out to forestall it in the attic or somewhere else later, yes? Mm -hmm. You heard her, boys. To the cellar it goes. Mush! Treating them as like dogs now, the movers bring down the mirror one step at a time, no matter how much the man tells them to hurry. An unsettling feeling grows in my stomach as I see our reflection in the bloody thing. And I look away, not wishing to risk anything. If I see Lorraine's image in the mirror now, I wouldn't know what to do. I don't have the luxury of privacy right now, and I'm not going to break down in front of all these people. Yeah, no way, there you go. Mrs. Wright only shakes her head and laughs at her husband's antics as they take the mirror out of here. He's back and at it again soon enough, pointing the men here and there. Eh, I'd say he's the man with the plan, but it sort of interferes with the layout, layout and the design that we've agreed, agreed upon before. I'm about to point it out, but... It's better you let him realize his mistakes on his own, rather than tell him of them. That way, you do not get blamed for his actions. <laughs> it is more fun, too, to tell him... Ah, uh, how does they say it? I told you so, once he slips up. <laughs> Been working with him long enough to know that, huh? It's not like I plan to make too much of a fuss unless what he changes is actually crucial. It happens often enough, when one is made to accompany him nearly all hours of the day. Ah, damn. Poor butler. Up! Higher! Come on now! Still, he could at least be less, you know, pushy about this. Careful and... now! I know your pictures are framed by cheap plastic, but those are framed by African Blackwood and are one-of-a-kind commissioned paintings. Each one is easily worth a lifetime of what you lot make. Jesus Christ. Oh, where did I hear that again? I'm not sure. It is surprising how, how, sorry, surprising how hands-on he, he is compared to my usual clientele. Well, the both of them are, actually. It's refreshing to have them participate despite their initial reluctance. Luke! Do the dishwashers go into the kitchen or the butler's pantry? Pantry, buttercup. Careful, that's a maho mahogany. No, no, you there, put that down. You do not manhandle a Napoleon Abueva. Whatever that is, he really needs to tone down the dramatics and notch, Mrs. Wright, and the butler looks like they're used to it by now. But the rest of us, well... Sweetie, why don't we go and sort your suits upstairs? Let your Hans and Marianne and the foreman deal with the rest of the work. We have this, Mrs. Wright. Yes, please do go before a blood vessel bursts. Blood stains are so troublesome to clean. <laughs> there is an obvious sense of relief as Mr. Wright is dragged out of the room, leaving the movers to do their work in peace. Some grumbling even crumbs from some of the younger workers. It's a good thing the family butler isn't some blindly loyal tool to his boss, or there will be trouble with Mr. Wright. <sighs> he is such a bratwurst. Whiny baby who never got enough hugs from his mooter. <laughs> Freaking your hands, man. Probably lost in translation, and not that I'm condoning talking about someone else behind their back, but I think you meant to call Mr. Wright a horrible brat. <laughs> hmm, well, he is that too. There are a lot of things I can call him, but I mean to say that he is a big weenie. <laughs> hey. A childish name for Brat a childish fist. person. Like a child, he whines when he doesn't get what he wants, and he breaks the toys that he has. Uh-huh. <laughs> that gets a laugh from me, as well as a few of the movers who linger near. He and I carry boxes, instructing the movers where they should be, and generally taking over Mr. Wright's work. It goes off without a hitch, and the man is helpful, efficient, and capable with physical labor, despite his clean cut of your- Oh, taking interest with your hands now, huh, Marianne? A gentleman to boot, taking boxes from me when he sees me struggling with them. Speaking of boxes- Hey, one of the boxes for the kitchen is missing? Has anyone seen it? The one with the pots and the knives. The Bratforst had it brought upstairs, thinking it was for the attic. Mm -hmm. Why would he- Oh, never mind. I'll go get it. 
Oh god. Knives and pots, we're back here again. Jesus Christ. I have a bad feeling about this whenever we go in the attic and stuff. Why even bring a box of pots and knives to the attic? That man is ridiculous. Wait, that kind of idea just came up. Pots and knives. Oh shit. You know, I had these speculations that Luke is supposed to be cursed by now, but the the ghost bitch doesn't really, you know, manifest it. Uh, you know, doesn't have. We don't have. He doesn't show any signs of manifestations of being cursed. Because what I'm thinking is he's actually already possessed in a way. I'm not sure. I am not sure. He just just doesn't know that he's possessed, but he's being possessed, like, you know, subconsciously or something. This is bad. Let's see. Let's see. There's probably no point in making sense of what he does if he does them just because he can. At least it turns out that I don't have to make it all the way up to the attic. The mover probably on Mr. Wright's order left the box on, box on the stairs. At least it's not that heavy. Um, I managed to hoist it up without too much effort. Okay. But the time it takes for me to do, to do that is long enough for me to overhear an odd conversation I could never in my life imagine coming from a couple like the Wrights. Mom, if you're not careful, I might go a bit loopy and I'll start bringing cats home. And soon enough, one day you'll find yourself going home to a farm just filled with felines that follow you everywhere. Oh, don't bluff. The things would shred up your precious furniture. Besides, you don't even like cats. Oh, true. Dogs are infinitely superior, of course. But what about the wet dog smell? The mess? I'm not cleaning up after a mutt, no matter how cute. If you think about it, a cat would be better. For once, I have to agree with Whiskey on this one. Though I can live with Mrs. Wright being a dog person. But as amusing as this conversation might get, I really shouldn't be caught eavesdropping or slacking off on the job. Okay then, so I I, 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 I actually overth I overthought the, the previous thing about the knives and the pots. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. <laughs> at most, I should be looking at ways of possibly soundproofing certain rooms. Perhaps bring it up if they don't realize the lack of it. Okay, I really should... Oh god, will this... Oh, should I move on or keep listening? Oh no. Is this a crucial is this a crucial choice? Mm. Mm. Okay, fine. Let's just keep listening. All right. I, I don't I don't think we there's anything wrong with just listening. I don't, I don't usually care for the private affairs of my clients. As I consider if I should lurk a little longer, I miss what else was said. All I know is that the topic has somehow moved on from pets to children. Oh, I, I wasn't being serious. Oh, yeah, they did have a conversation about children. It's not something you take the piss out of. Mm -hmm. Having a kid is a big responsibility, Hannah. We've talked about this, haven't we? We, I'm not ready to be a parent. I'd probably end up killing a little brat by the week's end. And the regret sinks in fast. Why can't I just keep to myself and mind my own business like I usually do? Of all the times to be curious. Lorraine, bless her soul, once told me that there are three things I shouldn't do unless I want to be on the shit list of social elites. First, don't mess with their livelihood. Whatever business they have that made them and keeps them rich is something they need to protect. Whether it's some multi-million company or some sort of state secret, they keep that close to their chest. Businesses that challenge legal matters and moral issues aside, unless they profited from criminal conduct, it's best to steer away and avoid being their competition. Second, don't mess with their affairs, especially the married sort. It's messy business just to even gossip about it. And worse to actually be the other woman. I'm towing the line with this rule as it is because of whiskey. And the third thing... Of all the times to be as sharp as a beach ball and as slow as a sloth, Marianne. Mm -hmm. Well, the third thing rings true for just about anyone, really. Don't mess with their family. Of course, she uses the word mess quite loosely. 
and I think that what I'm doing now falls under the multiple definitions it could take. Listening to this something so undoubtedly private is a great way to get in trouble. Oh, gee, thank you. Don't finish that sentence, Hana. Just don't. Ah, damn. You know how this discussion ends. Let's not fight over what if and if only. But All right. we are going to have a family, Luke. What then? Is she still listening? Oh, God. I just told you. No what if. We won't talk about it until you're ready. Let's not talk about it then. Ever. Yeah, I hated this conversation. Jesus. I walk away as far and as fast as I can while still carrying the box until I'm a good distance off in the foyer. I even risk my neck taking the steps down two at a time before quickly handing off the kitchenware to your hands. You really shouldn't run down those stairs. You might slip and break your neck. And that isn't a pretty way to go. Is that some foreshadowing or something? Jesus I'll Christ. keep that in mind, thanks. I wouldn't want anything to happen to my pretty neck. <laughs> Why do you think I wear a scarf? <laughs> because they are comfortable? Uh, Other than that, they are still serious choking hazards. You might be wearing your own noose. Is that a foreshadowing of something? Damn Cut it. the morbid stuff and let's get these things where they belong. My kitchen, my rules. If mm. you have somewhere else to go, which I'm sure you have, you may leave the area to me. Well, I still have to check a few things there, if you don't mind. How many times do you need to check every room? Are you sure you're not just looking for this secret recipe of my Kirby soup? Because I'll have you know, it is all in my head. What's a Kirby soup? I'm now <laughs> I'm really curious. I like to be thorough with my work. I'm sure you understand. Mm -hmm. He shrugs as we enter the kitchen. The box is quickly placed on one of the countertops and he sets to work quietly. Occasionally, he would ask me to take one thing or another and place it someplace safe. Or, or someplace else, but for the most part, I'm left thinking about what I just heard. That talk of children, Mrs. Wright's insistence in getting that room. Could it be? No, she doesn't look it, but of course it could just be too early to show. Oh yeah, Hannah's pregnant. Yeah, I remember. And if she is, does Whiskey know? It really didn't sound like it. What do I care, though? Well, aside from the fact that I may be working with a pregnant woman who will have a baby in the near future, and this place isn't exactly up to modern safety standards, the slightest possibility that this might be the case only makes me worry. And I have to do a better job than what I usually do. All right, the movers work efficiently even when they're left alone, and they do a quick work of their responsibilities. The head foreman comes, standing in the doorway, to consult me on this or that, and I have to go help out every now and then. But they pretty much have everything up to standards. They skip lunch entirely, not even realizing when they do so. Nevertheless, all is well as the butler gets to heating up the leftover bubble and squeak from breakfast, and makes a generous batch of fish and chips for them. Most likely simple in comparison to what he served to the rights, but well done, nonetheless. That smells good. Want to wrap up some for me to go? <laughs> it's an idle observation more than anything. My thoughts as they are, are you know, preoccupied. If there are any left, one can't go wrong with fish and chips. Everyone loves them. Everyone. Even my husband. And he's American. Oh, yeah. I, uh, yeah, I remember. He's actually he's actually gay. Uh, guy white. Why didn't I? Why did I remember? But at least we now know that he's American. You know, he's, he's husband. That is. I really do hate getting up so close and personal with my clients. It's a distraction. <laughs> it is obvious to me that I've gotten my priorities all wrong when I can't help but think about what I heard and what I learned about the right couple. These things have a way of creeping up on a person. Thoughts, ideas, whether they are fact or fiction. They creep up and fester, crawl and writhe in a way that twists. I hear giggling, delighted and mocking. They creep up and... You know, the sensation of fingers ghosting briefly on my arms causes me to freeze and hiss. <gasps> oh god. Don't! Oh! I half expect her to be there. Whoa, no need to scream bloody murder! <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's just me. Quiet down before you break glass. Mm -hmm. But it's just whiskey. Don't do that again, ever. I don't like being scared. 
though I don't believe in the likes of spooks. Being startled is not on top of the list of things Marianne liked. Lucky for him, I have nothing within reach, or he would have gotten on friendly terms with something like a rolling pin. What was with that reaction? Were you really scared? Has Johans been telling you ghost stories? He just loves to scare people. Well, if only you knew. Isn't delicious. that right, brother Guriam? Oh, he's still there. The butler's expression is unreadable. <laughs> I hardly see any emotion on his face to begin with since I started working off for the rights, aside from vague amusement. There must have been something there though, judging from Mr. Wright's own content look. <laughs> the expression on Mr. Wright's face is almost... cruel. <laughs> but neither of them spoke, even as Yuan's leaves the room to serve the workers their late lunch. So, now that we're alone, Marianne, what are you so jumpy for? I was just thinking about all the urban legends the movers have been telling me about this place. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me you believe in that tosh. They're nothing but tales made up to scare children. Timmy, Billy, don't you dare go up to that big mansion and get in trouble there. The ghosts are going to get you. That's <laughs> a boring way to look at it, but that's usually what it is anyway, no? Like I said, I was just thinking. Just thinking. It will be a relief, actually, if those rumors of this place being haunted is true. That just means I'm not going bonkers. Hearing, let alone seeing, a dead person isn't exactly the symptoms of a healthy mind. Sure, it means there will be such things, such as ghouls and goblins, but at least I'd be sane. On the other hand, there will actually be a dead girl walking around. If you could excuse the inane question, Mr. Wright, you haven't noticed anything weird here? A simple enough question on the surface, yet I notice the man stiffen as the question leaves my mouth. I wouldn't have noticed it if it, I wasn't watching his reaction intently, but in his eyes I see something... dangerous. That depends on your definition of the word weird. Are we still on the topic of this place being haunted? Because no, things have not started to fly around and we have yet to require an exorcism. I don't think my head would like to do the whole 180 degree turn thing. Oh jeez. <laughs> well, maybe that, but no strange people? Aside from my usually weird butler and all the weird men traipsing around touching my things? No, not really. Why do you ask? Have you noticed anyone strange while you were here? Because you must report it to Johans and he'll have security handle it. But these reports better not be about ghosts and things that go bump in the night. I don't want to waste manpower on the boogeyman or senseless witch hunts. Mm. I'll keep that in mind, Mr. Wright. But no, it's nothing like that. I guess the mansion is just strange for me. It's a unique project. Mm -hmm. No strange men or women lurking about then? A dead teenager will technically qualify as strange. But yeah, the whole I see dead people thing isn't going to go over well. None that I know of. But I'll inform your hands immediately if something comes up. I'm serious, Mint. You see anything, anyone suspicious, and you report it. Immediately. I think that goes without saying. The concern he have on the talk of security is quickly gone. His arrogant smug smirk returns, if a bit, you know, subdued. Whatever smarmy remark or innuendo he has at the ready never comes through. I, I, I'm sorry, never comes though, as voices from the dining hall ring out. Oh, is this a full time job for you then? Oh, this is where Zach comes in. Nah, I just freelance mostly uh, for magazines, newspapers, and events. So you can't really call it a full time job. It's fun and it puts food on the table, but it's not what I really want to do. At least not all the time. That will be the magazine photographer, I presume? As always, Mrs. Wright talks in such a kind and cheery fashion no matter who she's talking with. It certainly puts people at ease around her. It sounds like it's working on the photographer, uh, you know, it's working on the photographer too. Hearing them though seems to put Mr. Wright in a sour mood. <laughs> Look at that face. At least if his small scowl is anything to go by. You know, is he jealous? Let's try to lighten the mood or ask if he's alright. Let's just, try, let's just try to lighten the mood for now. You're not gonna go out there and join Mrs. Wright? You're starting to look strained. If you want your picture taken so badly, I'm sure the photographer would oblige. What is it that you want to do then? <laughs> oh. 
Documentaries, mostly. But cinematography is a lot more difficult than photography, right? I was working on the thing, actually. We need to get you away from the butler. You're starting to sound like him. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I'm not joining Hana for an interior design magazine photo. What am I? A piece of furniture? Look, did a lot of you have anything else crucial to do today? Marianne. There are still some little things to do. It isn't the end of the day yet. Yes, yes, but you're paid hourly, aren't you? Per day? Wow. <laughs> really, I don't care. You and the others can just take off for the day. Why is he dismissing us early all of a sudden? Is this about the possible security threat? Did my question get him all wary and paranoid that he will just send the workers and I away? I realize that threats are of actual concern to these rich and powerful people, and I imagine whether anyone wants to or not, they get a few enemies here and there. But I'm sure the foreman and his workers can be trusted and are of no threat. Well, at least I trust the people I'm working with. I understand if he doesn't, he doesn't know them from a can of paint. Still, I want it be, want it be safer if there are people around who can watch their back. You're the boss. My being paid by the day aside, I won't be held responsible for any significant delay caused by your decisions. I'll try to get around that, of course, but I'll just remind you of the fact. Mm -hmm. Whatever, take forever with the house. I don't give a bloody damn. Don't you worry, you're still getting your money. Just sort off. Go crawl around a pub and find yourself a good lay. <laughs> wow, paranoid or aggravated as you might be, this conversation certainly did have to warrant that sort of remark. Maybe I will. Oh, maybe I will. Maybe I will. I'm out of here. Walking out of the kitchen, I just accept the fa fact that whatever he says will go while under his roof. Mrs. Wright and the photographer are still far too busy in conversation to notice me even as I make my way through the dining hall. Besides, I didn't want to ruin their fun. Well, it wasn't really a big thing. People didn't like Blue Fancy very much. People don't like a film about colors. I suppose they would have liked Blue Bibi a lot more. <laughs> Going to the foyer has me stumble upon the family butler once more, who raises a bro at my presence. And where are you off to in a hurry, Miss McCulloch? The foreman is looking for you. The Bratwurst wants us off the clock. He's dismissing us early because of... Oh, I don't know. He just oh, wants us out of here. I'll go and call a cab for you then. It would be for the best that you leave when he asks you to. I don't doubt it. Uh, my ride back to the city doesn't take too long to get here. Granted, there were some difficulties at first because the driver didn't know where the Ermine Guard Mansion is. He tried to have us and you know hand over GPS coordinates from our smartphones or some other techno babble I didn't care about, and the butler didn't understand. But as soon as we told him it's the haunted mansion over in Ansem Village, he knew just the place. And finally headed over, albeit with some hesitation. All the way back to the city, the driver keeps complaining about that place giving him the willies. It gave me willies too, but I would have loved to snap at him. You know, I would have loved to snap at him. But as soon as the thought occurs to me, another blossoms in the forefront of my mind. One that has somehow bothered me greatly more than my exasperation over whiskey and this project, or wanting all of it to stop. There has been no Lorraine whispering over my ears today. Hey, isn't that a good thing? Worse. Worse, I find myself searching for it. Oh. Oh, that's... that's... alright. That's something else then. Searching for her. Damn you, Earthy! Loose ends. Fucking bloody loose ends everywhere! I thought I've already moved past this years ago. And it does nothing to help me curb my frustration. If anything, it only ensures that I want a stiff drink. And where else do I go to a drink? The pub! Tuesdays are for karaoke and Wednesdays, improv. Usually it's these four guys who did hilarious games. The one with the Irish drinking songs are always a crowd favorite. Though I love a good laugh, stand-up comedy isn't my thing. And without Cam or Haruna or any other distractions, I end up drinking a lot more this time. And when there's several bottles of beer in me, I get really, really embarrassed. Hey! G! Psst! G! Come over here! Y you mean me? Glocka? G Glocka? What? I need you for something! Uh-huh. It's a good thing that the bartender is a nice follow. 
fellow, I'd probably have been kicked out of other places by now, or worse. If push comes to shove, all he will do is give me an easy smile and shake off his head, even when he's attending to other customers. Just like now. Give me a moment, will ya? I gotta go check on her. He's some Asian guy. And I'm pretty sure I've seen him before a couple of times, although he never talks to anyone else except G. The girls used to be all over him too, but he always turned them away. I'll be here. You go do that before <laughs> she falls over. Asian Joe. God damn it, Dash. We meet again. All right, all right. What is it? Why do you look like the freaking... He looks like the, the chief of police. He also sounds like him as well. Do you need someone to help you get home? Bartender, par the wine. I think that's enough alcohol for you, little missy. I'm cutting you off. He also sounds like the taxi driver. <laughs> A wine comes from the back of my throat as he pulls my bottle away. I have no hope of getting them back once they're behind the counter. Even in my drunken mind, I don't dare hop over it for them. Guess what little sense I have left knows I'd sooner take a floor dive than succeed in wrestling a bottle from a sober man. But that hasn't stopped me from trying to reach out with my arms like a stupid idiot anyway. He smiles and shakes his head, just like I know he will, before going back to the other guy. Right now, where were we? Are you holding up, boy? With no drink and no one to really chat with, I would have gone home or gone to sleep on the bar right there and then. But I'm not ready to stand up and try to trek back home just yet. Same ol', same ol'. I'm still on the Luxborn firm case. Those blokes they talk about being in dark suits, whisking people into the night or some shit and all that. Hmm. Didn't the media call it some ridiculous name in the morning news? What is it this time? Wait, don't answer that. They've called it a lot of things. As long as people don't start running around claiming they're the Illuminati. <laughs> so, what have you got for me this time, G? Anything good? Slow down there. You haven't even told me what sort of deal in Dosh we got. Uh, this is a uh, typical, you know, uh, detectives going to pubs to, you know, gather information because that's the best place to gather information guys who are you looking into this time their talk would have interested me would have kept my attention if i give a damn but in my current state i can barely give two fucks about the things going on around me all oh, these words are just buzzing buzzing barely surfacing from the sea of sounds that is the pup and it would have stayed that way perhaps even drowned if you know if didn't hear his name luke wright you know the guy. Oh, whiskey! <laughs> and don't pretend like you don't, G. It takes a special kind of ignorant not to know who he is. <laughs> that smug blonde who likes throwing around his money. He was just here a few days ago, as a matter of fact. Great tipper, if you think him just dumping a wad of cash on the counter after having too much whiskey counts as tipping. <laughs> Why are you asking? He dirty? You have no idea, G. He's probably the worst sort you can imagine. The fucking right. Fucking whiskey! Even without him around, I'm still hearing about the guy. What the absolute fuck? Despite this, I find myself getting up and sauntering over to join them before I pipe up. Is this smart talk about Luke fucking right I'm hearing, eh? Yes, Luke fucking right! Private conversation here, lady. Mm, there's only amusement on G's face. The Asian guy, he starts to look ticked off as hell. Don't worry, Holmes, she's clean. And she might be able to help you with your uh, predicament. Course. A drunk's just stumbled through here with what I need. Get real, G. No offense, lady, but you're smashed. Yeah, I, I know, know, right? Nothing beats being drunk after a hard day's work. Especially when you're working for Mr. Luke Wright. <laughs> I love drunk Mary. Ann. So she works for the guy? Doesn't that make her, I don't know, suspect? See, you have a little faith in me, why don't ya? I don't have much, and you might as well have something to go off. You're the one who was so desperate to come run into me for business. Yoo-hoo! Still right here, fellas! Five feet eleven! Can't miss me! <laughs> Unlike Shorty <laughs> over here. What's with that mad look? You want to dance, boy? You don't look like you can bust a groove. Maybe a leg, but with that fancy coat of yours. To add insult to injury, I moved directly behind him and used the top of his head as an armrest. <laughs> but when he shakes me off, I plop into the seat right next to him. Don't try me. You can hardly stay on your feet. 
So oh, you're gonna hurt the girl, you're gonna hurt the girl, yeah? Uh, we don't want to ruin your fancy coat, do we? Ah, oh, children, the both of ya. But you're still standing after all that, are ya? Matt, you see this giantess? She's a legendary regular here. <laughs> Been drinking like there's no tomorrow. I'm a bit jealous. Can't do that anymore or my liver will give out on me. Good with the mic, too. Don't see you much recently, but I guess you're always busy, aren't you? You're some fancy designer or something, if I remember correctly. Wait, I know you. You were at the open house for the mansion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Marianne Mc... Oh, I'm a famous interior designer extraordinaire. Ooh, that Roy. <laughs> oh, God, I love drunk Marianne. <laughs> anyway, you guys were talking about that weenie Luke right, right? Or something. Can't really talk about it. I don't even know if I can trust you, even if G said you're clean. But anything would be of help. Well, I don't gossip about my clients, if that's all there is to this. You wanted to gossip about him a few minutes ago, Marianne. And that was the beer talking, not Marianne. You won't mind if we ask the beer a few questions then? <laughs> Maybe. Depends on who's asking and what they're asking. But seriously, that guy is absolutely frustrating. One moment, he's an absolute dickhead. And then he's acting like an actual decent human being the next. I just can't figure him out. I can't imagine how that pretty wife of his can put up with him. If I were her, I'd dump his flat arse straight up. <laughs> And I'm not just saying that because I think Hannah's pretty or anything. Luke is a catch too, they both are. But I really cannot, for the love of all things, holy, see how they even work out together. So, Luke Wright, have you probably. noticed anything strange about him while you were working with him? Ah, uh, alright. Anything yeah. peculiar? Of note? You're the one being pe pe peachy right about now, Holmes. But nah. Nothing that comes to mind off the top of my head. He's just like most rich, smarmy arseholes and then some. Our giggle bubbles up and I press my cheek against the cool countertop with my eyes shut tight. Just because. Eventually, cracking one eye open, just in case they thought I fell asleep, I grin at Holmes. So, Holmes, I'm guessing you're some private detective or something. Is it Hannah? Did she pay you to look if he's been cheating or some such? Hannah's the wife, right? What about her? How is she? How is she or how is she? Well and good. Huh. <laughs> Definitely the nicer of the two and sexy as sin to boot. Not a private detective then. Are you from one of them tabloids wanting to know if the Luke Roy doesn't know how to put his pants on right? Hmm, <laughs> pants. I take the pants off of... Ah, here we go. Slipping, slipping. I haven't been this drunk in such a long time. It's a miracle I've been coherent for as long as I have been right I'm now. I'm asking you if you've noticed any odd behavior from her. Odd behave? You what? I wonder how she'd be drunk. I can just imagine her like the giggly sort. What do you think? <laughs> These are serious questions, Marianne. Lives might just be at stake here. What, are they in some kind of Yakuza or something like that? What do you expect? She smashed. Why am I even doing this? This is getting me nowhere, G. She's not a reliable source. The chief, let alone the courts, aren't going to take the word of a drunk. This'll be dismissed and I might be in trouble if they try to argue that I coerced a testimony out of her. This is a fucking train wreck. You're a fucking train wreck now, if you ask me. <laughs> Maybe it's about time you apply the brakes and stop for a bit. The wave of despair that comes over the both of them is palpable. If feelings had a taste, it'd be bitterer than the beer I'm full of. And it gets me thinking. Though thinking doesn't get me far with too much shit in my system. You know that's not an option. Thanks for being patient, McCullough. Good luck with your work on that mansion. Speaking of that mansion, there's something going on in that place. Something, something... As och de! No wonder Mr. Wright likes it so much! It's as fishy as he is, rotten bloke. Maybe <laughs> that Santos girl is really onto something, eh? Suspicious shite, I'm telling you. Explains why she's so reluctant. 
What do you mean that Santos girl is onto something? Mm. Before I get another word out, there's hands on my shoulders and everything starts to spin. I quickly slap his hands away the best I can and send him the foulest look I can muster. Take your hands off me, pipsqueak! I'm not a lady who's shaken or stirred unless you want me up chucking on your pretty hair. But it's <laughs> just like I said. Are you sure you aren't brain damaged or deaf? Santos girl from VRC showed us this creepy letter. You know, just like those spam stuff you get in your emails. And we thought it was some joke or that the girl was just a bit too green to handle a big sale like that. You should have seen the look on their faces when they saw it. Whiskey, that's Luke fucking right, you get me. And the missus didn't look too happy either. I should have taken a picture and posted it everywhere. Oh God, and that means everyone will see the letter. When rich snobs give you that face, no wonder the Santos girl went all mental on us. Working with them does that, you know? I think I'm about to. I'm not mental yet, am I? Anyway, just like I said, in that man... Hey, you okay? <laughs> Holmes? You're looking a bit shaky yourself there. And he really is pale. Paler than before, at least. I can see the gears turning in his head on overtime. Suddenly, he shows a card in my hand. Oh, there you go. Ashton Frey at luxburn.police.uk. On it, his name, Ashton Frey, and his number. But uh, he has second thoughts as he grabs it from me and splits it into my pocket. <laughs> Slip, sorry. You're cute, pretty boy. But I prefer blondies. Well, you're not exactly my type either, lady. But listen to me. If something comes up, don't do anything rash. If you think you're in danger or if you see anything suspicious, Call me and the authorities as soon as possible. You understand me? That's 99... I know what the damn emergency number is. Right, 999. Good. 999? Really? Put that upside down, it's 6666. Jesus Christ. Anyway, I have to run. <laughs> See you, G. Oh, wow, the guy's quick on his feet, already up and at him as soon as the number leaves his lips. Watching him as he maneuvers through the crowd over of other pub goers is enough to tire me out. Fast as he can, he's at the door and throws us a smile, and that's all we get before he's gone. Just like that. Oi, what right. about your drink, boy? I'm gonna put it on your tab then. Holmes boy always like that, G? Uh, pretty much. But what about you? I suppose I'll put your drinks on your tab too. Don't want you to spill your wallets when you look like you're close to spilling yourself. <laughs> yeah, and if it's fine by you, I think I'll go take a bit of a cat nap here. Just for a sec or two. Uh, go right ahead. I'll wake you when I close up shop. And there you go, mumbling a sleepy thanks I dove off on the spot, face pressed on the counter. Already I dread the pain I'll have for sleeping in such a position. But when you gotta go, you gotta go. Oh fucking hell, dude. We're back here. Ha! God damn it! You know what? I just realized this episode is almost an hour long. And I've been talking and talking and talking. And I'm tired now. But hey, we're gonna end it right here in another, you know, creepy cliffhanger or something. But holy crap, guys. Ashton became pale. After hearing about that, you know the what what Marianne said about uh, Isabella being bonkers and stuff like that. So that means at this time, Ashton probably, probably, probably had an encounter with the ghost bitch or something like that. I'm not sure. Okay, and and Ashton has some stuff I don't understand as well. Some uh, he's inv he's investigating a certain type of group or gang or some yakuza type of shiz. I don't know, and he's linking them to Luke Wright. Something's up. Something's really up. And we're gonna find that out in the next episode, hopefully, <laughs> alright? So again, thank you so much to everyone who's still continuing to support this series and watching a one-hour episode of this. Hope you guys managed to <laughs> finish this video. You know, well, you're probably watching it right now if you if you did. But again, thank you so much, and I'll try, I'll try to upload the next part as soon as possible. Thank you so much again, guys, and I'll see you again next time. Bye!